You know, people say that divorce is like losing a limb, an amputation, but I'd argue that it's more like losing your balls, full on castration. Because metaphorically speaking, that's exactly what happened. And today we're diving into how to regain your masculinity through separation and beyond. So let's stop feeling sorry for ourselves and let's start revving that engine. During the last few years of your marriage, you, you put up with a lot of your ex's shit. And many guys leave a marriage with post-traumatic stress disorder. You've compromised your interests, your independence, you, you lost that edge, and, and this is while you were married. So by the time that she tells you that she wants a divorce, your confidence is just so fucked up that you second guess everything, even the smallest things. Like, what if she told you to buy white or, or yellow onions? Which one was it? While she was thinking of a divorce and building her whole entire divorce team, the prospect of you getting divorced, it was inconceivable and you further bury yourself into the sunk cost fallacy and you think divorce is it's not going to be an option. So you further isolate yourself as, as you pucker up and kiss her ass. You become that needy bitch to get her back and, and this works like zero goose eggs percent of the time because no one wants a sim. You've been cuckold. So she now sees you as an obstacle that, that she has to get rid of rather than her husband. Your separation will be one of the most emasculating times of your life and you're stuck there because you can't, you just can't see yourself outside of this relationship. So you put your life on hold, but publicly you're gonna tell people that, that you're working on yourself when you're really, what you're really doing is just working on yourself for her. Add in the emotional beatdown of your ex saying shit like, you broke me or, or you're a piece of shit. Or the very idea of your ex being with another man is gonna lead to some crazy mind fucks. Like, who's she with? What's she doing? How can she be moving on like nothing ever happened? That gentlemen is how your masculinity gets stripped. You've let someone else define who you are and you've lost that damn compass. That inconvenient truth is that when it comes to recovery, those that pride themselves on having more brawn than brain, they're the hardest to recover. The fighters who have historically seen themselves as tough or masculine, they're the hardest and the slowest to recover from a divorce as, as they take that shit like a defeat. And I think it's because for the first time in their life, they, they lost their connection to their masculinity and once they lose something, they rely on so much. They have no idea how to defend themselves. That leads to a huge drop in confidence and they continue asking themselves self-defeating questions. But you can't fight your way out of this pain and tact will only serve you so much if you don't have a strategy. So you gotta get out of that castrate itself. You're gonna have to learn a new way to fight because you're brawn. These things, they're not gonna help you out in your despair. You're gonna have to begin to think differently and open your mind to new ideas. Just surrender to win. You're asking yourself wrong questions. Our, our confidence is so fucked up that even our questions, they're about her. How could I let her go? Or why does she leave me? And these aren't healthy questions to be asking yourself right now. Later, yes, but right now your house, it's on fire and, and you have to stop that fire from, from spreading around. Only later do you take an inventory and ask where the fire started. But right now, it's not the time. And during my initial consultations with many of you, expect to be asked some really difficult questions, some that have never, that you've never bothered to ask yourself. Ironically though, is that these are common questions like, why aren't you happy? Or what do you want your legacy to be? Or what would make you proud of yourself? But we never think of questions like that. We never take an inventory of our life. We've ne always been taught that it's selfish and, and this sucks because there's so many mothers out there teaching their daughters to be independent while we teach our boys to be good men. Whatever you teach your children, you have to teach yourself. And to many, that means to surrender to grow and accept that you need to develop also. And in order to do that, you're gonna have to learn some new skills. Become more self-aware, know your strengths, your limitations, your leadership style, along with your communication style. What are you good at? Try new things, accept yes for an answer. Find a coach, learn philosophy, work out, reflect on where you wanna be and what tools you have available to your disposal to get there. And that's what I do as a coach. I uncover all this information, put them together and help you get there. All of it. What you have to do is you got to cut the cord and accept that your past is exactly what it is. Your past. And enough with the what is and the could have been. It's over. The marriage is done. And the man that you were in that marriage, he needs to die right now. Like right now, because emotionally he's bankrupt. As for your ex, She's moved on and probably enjoying her new life while you're stuck in your dark abyss of despair. You've got to give yourself permission to move on and surrender. Surrender to win.
You want to let go of that guy. You want to regain your masculinity. It, it, it's easier than you think. Begin by forming boundaries with your ex. Just start by saying no. No. Make your absence felt and let her know that her decision comes with some dire consequences and that includes losing the guy. The one guy that she could count on the most. Then the first time that you do it, you'll see that it's fucking refreshing. It's addicting. Redefine what being a man means because as a man, the most masculine person you can become is, is truly yourself. Just a grown up, sexier version of you. You know where we fuck up? We let society define what masculinity is and we confuse the tough guy as having balls, but masculinity has evolved. It's no longer about stoicism and toughness, but rather emotional intelligence, self-awareness, self-assurance. It's that man who knows how to carry himself. It's a self-sufficient man. It's the single dad. It's what you make of it. So no longer, no longer are the days of clean Eastwood or Jason Statham, but rather Ryan Gosling or Michael B. Jordan. When we describe a man, we throw out words like strength, honor, purpose, integrity as the definition of masculinity, but it's way more than that. So leaving it down, it's just bullshit because that's just old school. It's vulnerability, it's trying new shit, it's, it's having the courage to ask for help, it's, it's letting go and moving forward. And I'll argue that style and grooming are also now staples of masculinity. That masculinity is evolved. It, it isn't about dominance or aggression. It, it's about controlled strength and direction. It's about knowing when to fight and when to walk away. It's, it's patience. It's integrity. It's intelligence and class. You've been through a lot of trauma in your life and others don't know how much and will never know, but it's not your job to teach them. It's your job though to mold yourself into that man and it's your job to thrive and let them see that, that you were right all along. To regain your masculinity, you're going to have to become your own badass and own, not just accept, but own and embrace your new reality. Your life will never be the same and that's a fact. And you have to give yourself permission to make this, this today, the best thing that's ever happened to you. When my ass got dumped, I had no idea of my future and I was scared, but I embraced it because I realized that I had choices that I didn't have back then. Choices that I couldn't do while I was married. And some really cool ones too, like where to spend my money, what to do with my kids. Not having to worry about her attitude and best, best of all is not having to worry about making her happy anymore. So I skipped to the fun part and buried myself on my development because self-development is the fun part of your divorce if you let it. You're not here to go back to who you were. You're here to become someone better and improve your life. Stop acting like this is a setback and start seeing it as, as a comeback. Life didn't go as planned. Welcome to reality. Adapt, adjust, and move forward. Make a morning routine and promise yourself that today, like right now, right after you're done watching this video, that you're, you're gonna be better than you were from the moment that you started seeing this video. What's stopping you? And if you don't know how, make an appointment with me by clicking in the link in the comment section underneath. I'll get you there. I will get you there. Stop talking about it and just start living. Take out your, uh, your new reality and own it. You've got an empty canvas. Do something beautiful with it because you're either growing or you're dying and there's no middle ground here. Every day, every action that you take is a step towards reclaiming your masculinity or a step away from it. There's no standing still. Practice good mental hygiene and stop talking about your woes because when you do that, the only thing that you're doing is you're reinforcing that negative feedback loop to, to grow and make the problem fucking bigger and bigger and bigger in your mind, making your ass more of a bitch as you go down that mind fuck. Train your brain to be resilient, to do shit that she, she would hate if you did, just because you can. It's refreshing. Take cold showers, do high intensity interval training, meditate, and seriously, talk to a coach that knows their shit. People say that masculinity is, that it's under attack and being part of the manosphere, I think that it's easy to label somebody as a misogynist. I've been called an MRA and I didn't know what that was until I looked it up. It's a men's rights activist. Men's rights activist, let's see if there's anything wrong with it. Sure, I'm an MRA. Why not? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. It doesn't take away from, from women's rights and aren't we all? For, for rights, taking your balls back is about taking control of your life. It's about staying relevant in the life of your loved ones. And it's a beautiful combination of leadership and relationship building. And that's all done by how you present yourself, your communication style. Point is, don't let this opportunity go to waste. Do something with it. Thank you very much.